The name of this site is uh, the former Brackley Sawmills. Uh, it produced a lot of timber products and also treated timber products. The main chemical process that occurred here was uh, treatment of timber fences used to preserve uh, the timber and solid from breaking down and rotting. Uh, in order to do that they used uh, sort of a, a bluey green paint uh, which contains high levels of copper, arsenic, hexavalent chromium and that liquid over the years has been able to sort of run and fall off the fence as it dries and uh, effectively contaminated the, the ground as it's accumulated over time. Uh, a lot of the buildings have uh, been sort of left in a, in a semi-derelict state, some have been taken down, some are sort of beginning to fall down and others have been sort of patched up really and used for sort of temporary storage type operations. Before we can start to do any remediation on site we have to assess the condition of the ground generally to find out if there's been any other polluting sources which could have arisen from say fly tipping causing uh, anything really from Japanese knotweed uh, to asbestos materials and also oils really from chemicals that have been uh, placed on the site. The most important thing for us to identify right from the start are all the different sources of waste and managing them to make sure that they're all segregated and that nothing's mixed together because once it's mixed together it's very difficult to unpick it and you've then got material that you can't necessarily treat as, as readily or as easily as you would do normally. The, the main reaction that uh, we looked at was uh, reacting the hexavalent chromium with sodium bisulfate to produce chromium-3, which is a far less toxic metal, uh, making sure that the site was suitable for use, protecting both the, uh, the end user and also the groundwater. Uh, we also discovered uh, three areas that had been affected by Japanese knotweed. In order to successfully treat that and stop it from spreading across the site, it was all fully excavated and the rhizomes were chased out completely and then it was placed in a deep burial cell wrapped in polythene to prevent any further regrowth. In addition to using conventional plant excavators and dump trucks to move the, the earth about and to, to break the concrete to treat the uh, contaminated areas, We've also installed 56 boreholes going down to between sort of 7 and 11 metres in depth in order to put in a chemical to actually uh, react long term with the, the groundwater contamination. On the very top of the site uh, we've got a, a former railway line. Uh, this area has been infilled with approximately 8 metres of fill uh, which uh, could present a bit of a problem and I think the, the, the wisest idea is uh, that there's no development on the top section. Prior to the demolition work starting at the uh, former Brackley sawmill, uh, we, had to, uh, we had two ecologists employed. One was to address the, uh, the colony of roosting bats uh, in a lot of the redundant buildings and subsequently a very large bat bomb was also constructed to, to rehouse them. And in addition to that there was also uh, a large uh, colony of lizards. Uh, which were also relocated many miles away. A component part to this site was uh, also accommodating the archaeologists. Um, a very large area of the site uh, was, was identified as having a, a potential historic interest and uh, the archaeologists uh, constructed a very large dig, found a number of sort of round um, uh, infilled areas uh, and on sort of careful excavation they uh, found a very old sort of harvesting tool uh, with a, a metal cutting blade and a bone handle uh, and as a result they uh, extended the dig uh, to look at further finds to see what the significance was of the area. Uh, we believe it was used for agriculture in uh, preserving grain. At the uh, end of any job we aim to have met all of our clients expectations, hopefully exceeded them and presented them with uh, reusable materials and also a site that's been completely remediated with a minimum amount of material removed. We've also cut down a lot of trees on this site which is a shame in some respects but we've not removed any of the vegetation from the site. All of the trees cut down will be chipped and shredded in order to be re-encompassed into a growing medium in uh, sections of the site. Aimed on this site to reduce the waste going off by as much as possible. The only materials that have really been removed have been scrap metal which is always recycled, a lot of the timber which again is recycled as biomass and uh, the only other material that's had to be removed to go to landfill has been the uh, cement bonded asbestos sheeting. Uh, the final stages of this project are to uh, produce sort of levels really within the site so there's a large cut and fill exercise going on moving uh, large amounts of earth to get a nice balanced contour across the site which is uh, currently ongoing. 
We offer a turnkey solution to tackle complex demolition and also the remediation of complex contaminants both in the soil and groundwater. 